I tried my best, but I simply couldn't record me finishing the rigging underneath the fuselage in the centre section of the wings. And it was really, really, really tricky. Very, very time consuming, very difficult. Um, I had this on its sponge block on top of um, a, a box to get even higher. And then I was kneeling on the floor so I could look up underneath. Now, one thing that is really handy when you're doing difficult, um, uh, er when you're doing rigging in difficult areas is one of these um so it's a rigging tool it has a hook on one end um often used by people that do wooden ship modeling or rigging of tall ships um so the the hook is so that you can uh, grab rigging and pull it towards you and then on the other end um there's this little cutout bit here which allows you to um put it around the rigging and push it away from you. So really, really handy tool. Um, I, I use it a lot when I'm doing my wooden uh, ships because you can grab things and um, move things out of the way and all of that sort of stuff. So you can make one though. You don't have to buy them. Uh, they're not dead expensive, but they're not as cheap as you'd like them to be either. Um, so um, I have before now just got a dowel and, and twisted some wire a, a, around the end of it and, and that'll do just as well. But something like that is really handy. You can see it pass through the, the whole depth of the wing quite easily. So that was handy. Um, the fact that I only had two hands on two arms was a little bit more restrictive though. Um, so... The, the rigging underneath is done. The rigging underneath of the tail is done. Um, so we're sort of finished there. Um, the gun is now mounted in. I've got a, um, a few little decals left to do on the uh, front um, leading edge of the wings. And there's a decal to go on the gun there. Um, so that completes the build with the exception of having to colour in the last bit of rigging that we added, which just turn around so see if you can see that. I don't think you can, so I'm going to tilt the wing. Okay, so you can see some rigging line. Uh, that goes into the engine, um, back of the engine the cell, um, goes through a little support, again, goes up towards the, the cross there, and then goes up to the wing above. So that's two pieces of rigging wire that basically start, um, they, they connect to this point here. So you've got one on each point, and then it drops down to the bottom, goes through some eyes, travels across, goes through a, um, a little stay that keeps it off the wing. Then it goes through the engine nacelle, through the back support of the fuselage, through the next engine cell, up through another support, up to another set of eyes, and then comes up to here, and they're all connected. So um, what I have done is um, I've, I've rigged that, so glued it, glued it in at this end first, threaded it along the line, and then glued it up through there, pulling it taut, had some um, tweezers, uh, self-locking tweezers dangled off to keep it taut, Glabs, put some uh, CA glue underneath, let that dry, trim it off, that was my process. So I still have to go in with a Sharpie um, and, uh, color that in um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll cut a little piece of um, the instruction book so let me show you a little piece of the instruction book so we can put that between the uh, wing and the um, rigging line while we color it in and just just move it along as we color it in and that'll stop any sharpie getting on the model so that's how we'll do that with with both of those lines again it's going to be very difficult for me to to show you that 
Um, yeah. I've got to say, the last part of this build has been very, very difficult. From the moment you come to put the fuselage in, um, it, it suddenly becomes a very, very tricky build. So I do need to um, put a final clear coat on the top of the fuselage sections and the top of the wing sections. Um, a little bit of touch up in places. Um, and then the only thing left to do is the propellers. So let me show you where I am up to with those. So uh, propellers have been, what we've done is we've given them their initial um, light wood uh, painting in. So process you've seen me do when we did the practice run on, on the propellers. So um, we laid down a white primer, then we went with um, uh, a light wood. Um, then uh, we've gone and put in, um, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, this one, the okra oil brusher to get the light wood streaking in it. Then we've given it the um, orange crystal clear um, coat over top to tint it. So um, the next thing that I need to do now is do the masks. So we'll do the masks and uh, do the laminations as I've shown you earlier in the build series. And then um yeah propellers is the last thing so we need to finish painting the propellers put the decals on mount them on um and then that is done um and we'll put the um decals on the rest of the aircraft when we do the propeller and that is done oh the other thing i've done is there's a couple of last bombs have gone on the inside um i've moved those around the shelf a little bit so that it looks like some bombs have been taken in a in no particular order so they're in different positions on each each shelf on each side yeah uh i mean thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this build um it's been one of the most enjoyable builds but it has been very challenging from the moment the fuselage went on Right, that's where we're up to. So um, I'm going to finish up these last bits and um, then I'm going to get the propellers done. And then I'll probably come back to you when we do the last decals and um, so you can see where they're going on. There's some particular ones on the lean edge, like I say, um, which are sort of metallic. So that should be uh, interesting to finish the look. Um, and then... Uh, we'll do um, we'll do a little bit of a, a chat about my experience of building the kit, and then we'll uh, finish with some final photos. I've done laminate propellers a number of times, and in fact, I've even done laminate propellers during the course of this build to take you through my process and and what have you. So I decided that I wouldn't take you through my process. At this back end because we were going to concentrate on the bits that you hadn't seen um, so wouldn't you know it because I've done it before <laughs> I had a problem um, so uh, this is the second time I've done these propellers and you only get one set of these in in the box because of the the brass tip um, and what happened is I put some uh, masking tape down and it lifted um, several several of the layers when I took it off. So I was really, really annoyed. Um, so I've redone it. Um, I am happy with it. It's the law of sod, isn't it? It's not, not They're not quite as nice as they were first time, but it, it is what it is. So I, I just wanted to show you where we've got to with these. So um, what we did with the tips is we put down um, a black gloss primer two coats um, to give it a nice uh, rich background and then we've done so far two coats of um, um, 1018 brass from ICM their metallic colors are lovely um, so yeah um, it needs a, a third final thin coat uh, to get the luster I want uh, and then we can gloss it all again 
Um, put the decals on, and gloss it all again. I've got the gunmetal to paint in the uh, center hub there, and there's a hub to go in the back. What I'm thinking of doing though is giving it an oil wash um, to give it a slightly more um, red color. So not not the um, acrylic filter that we've used uh, previously, but an, uh, an oil wash. And because I've not done that before, um, I'll, I'll probably show you that. I just I just want to tint this down and and have a slightly more um, red brown look to it, which will uh, should give it. Um, a nice look. They just look a little bit pale right now, so uh, I just want to um, finish them off. But that's where we are now. So uh, the the next step is to uh, finish doing the uh, brass and then seal it all in. So when I've done that, we'll have a look at doing this oil wash. Right. Um, we are now ready to put the decals on to these propellers. And then um, it's just a final gloss coat and um, we can get them on the model finally. Um, and then the only thing left to do is uh, just go around and check for any touch up that needs to be done. And, and then it's uh, game over for the goater, for now at least. Um, I will be doing something, you'll, you'll never see me do it, um, but I do have a little bit of remedial work to do and I'm waiting for some parts to be delivered to do that but I'll explain all of that when we do the uh, final reveal of this so and I've also got uh, a dial the, the little wind speed dial needs to be done as well so while we've got the water out we might as well do that so let me get my uh, uh, I don't think we're going to need to set it, but we'll get some softener just in case. Now, I never put softener down first on um, cartograph decals because they just don't need it, and you run the risk of getting them too soft and them being damaged. Now, um, there is a, an instruction somewhere um, that tells you, uh, here it is. This is our instruction for putting the decal. On number 21 goes there and there. Um, you've got four, so you have to work out that you need to do it on both propellers. Um, but actually, this is a better reference, lovely reference picture that they've put in here. Um, and you can see it's actually quite high up. And you can just make out that the cross is at the top. So it is well up here going down. So keeping that line there as the straight edge as as i see it so um yeah let's uh let's see how they perform right i can start lifting these out now they've soaked long enough um, and that means that we're not going to have them the backing paper sink to the bottom and then have to try and catch decals which is uh it's always a fun game to play if you want to play that it's uh always a bit of fun so let's get one out of the way no, nowhere near yet seems to be a lot of hair knocking around at the moment I wonder if it's the jumper I've got on I'm just gonna get my brush wet so I'm ready, should we need to use it. Okay, I suspect we're probably ready now, so let's just see. Yeah, that's moving about. So. Making sure there's no hairs being transferred. Yeah, that's about right so I am going to put some 
microsol down over the top here just push that hair out there we go that is our first decal on that really finishes off the uh, the propeller nicely so do the same again Right, now that one isn't right, so let's just do that. That needs to be a bit more in the middle. I think it needs to be just a smidge up, but yeah. Let's just squeegee the water and the air out of that. And again, just a spot of microsalt. That should go down lovely. So that's that done. And I will give it a, a one final gloss coat over that. Um, should look stunning, really. Right. Just move this over because that's not gone down where we need it at all. Okay. Just pulling that over a little bit. Needs to be nice and in line with that straight edge. And I think that's a little bit high up, just a smidge. That's, that's more like what we've done on the others. Yeah, still possibly a smidge too high. There we go. I'm just going to block that now. the excess water off and there we go That's that one done. So last propeller decal. I'll put the other one there for a height reference. Oh, pretty much spot on that. Couldn't have done better if I tried. Right, that looks okay. So There we go, lovely. So I'm going to let those dry actually overnight now because it's getting on a bit. Um, and then we can gloss coat those in the morning. Um, and then just a little bit of a wash in the little hubs there. And then we are done. Um, I'm just going to check which side they go on. So it's curved blade on the outside. Yeah. And whenever you see pictures of it, they always seem to have the propellers in that position. And there's several different pictures of it, and they're almost always in that position. Um, yeah, you see, it's in that position there. But whenever it's stationary, I see all the other 
pictures are in flight now. It seems to have the propellers always stationed like that. So I guess that is some procedure ready for starting up again. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to model it in that position just so it uh, looks authentic to any, any pictures that you might see. Right. Okay. So without further ado, I've got that to put on, um, which I'm going to do off camera because um, it's difficult to get to that, see that on camera anyway. So I'll get that done and then uh, I think I'll do touch up and then I'm going to come back to you. Well, sadly, that's the end of the build. And I can say that because I have thoroughly enjoyed every moment of building this. So I just wanted to reflect a little bit on uh, uh, building the kit and uh, what I think of the kit um, and my experience, because this is the first time I've built uh, a Wingnut Wings kit. So when I went into this, um, I knew it was going to be a big aircraft. Um, I didn't know um, that it was going to be quite as technically challenging as it actually ended up being in some places, and we'll we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, but I, I went into it with you know being a few years since I've done any um, wood effects seriously, at least. I, you know I've done done the occasional car bulkhead and bits and pieces. Um, but this was the first time I'd, uh, I'd ever had such a huge amount of wood to do and try and do different effects and different tones. And, you know, the interior, I've tried to make every panel look different. Um, so th there was some parts of the build that I was a little bit daunted by going into it. Um, and, you know, I, I was a bit concerned that maybe I'll get going and think, actually, uh, I, I'm not enjoying this and, uh, and I might lose my mojo for it and become another shelf queen. Um, and that's not the case at all. Um, I, I enjoyed every minute of the build. Um, I've always looked forward to the weekend when I'm working on the Gota. Um, it's been hard to put down at times and, there has been the occasional week where I've done some of this when I should have been doing something else. Um, so yeah, it's been a thoroughly enjoyable build. And I, before I switched the camera on, I was just thinking, um, what's my nearest comparison? What's the, what's the build that I've enjoyed the most, um, before this? And it, it's really interesting because um, the, the, the build I'd enjoyed the most before this was actually the Airfix 124 Hellcat. And that's odd because I still consider myself primarily a ship modeler. I've only been building aircraft for three and a half years. So to, to, um, to be able to say that the two models I've enjoyed building the most are both aircraft is, is a little intriguing, isn't it? Um, so I like building ships because of the complexity. I like construction. I like the building process. I like the complexity of building process. And I'm always looking for a kit that is technically a challenging build. And this um, certainly ticks that box big style. So um, what I've found is uh, this is not a kit for a beginner by any stretch of the imagination. And I've built a number of um, biplanes um, in, in my time over the years. Um, and uh, one of the first planes that I did for go back three and a half years ago when I got back into building um, aircraft uh, was a, a Wolseley Viper from Edward 148 scale double wings. And I really enjoyed that as well. 
um, partly because it was a red and a, a bit of a sucker for red. But this, um, it, it has lots and lots of uh, tests in there for you. Um, now, having not built a wingnut wings kit before and having heard lots of people who, who have built them before or uh, talk about them, I, and makes me wonder a little bit how many people that talk about them have actually built a good number of them. But I've certainly watched other people build them, um, but not this one. And not uh, I've not seen many builds of things as big as this, to be honest. Um, and I don't know whether this kit is in some way different to Wingnut Wings kit because I've, I've got no uh, measure against it. I've got another two uh, Wingnut Wing kits in my stash to build at some point, and then I'll be able to draw a more complete conclusion. Um, but what I can say about this is. Um, uh, the the plastic parts, the kit itself is beautiful. Uh, it's got lovely, well thought through detail that is not just detail for the sakes of detail. You know, they've not spent loads of time doing a really detailed engine that you never see. Um, they have uh, concentrated on the detail where it matters. There is no detail that we built and spent lots of time on that you can't see. Now the engines you can cover up but I've chosen to have one uncovered so we can see all of that lovely detail on both sides. We miss nothing and all of that inter glorious interior detail that we did at the start of the uh, building process um, it, it is all visible. Some of it only just, but it is there. Um, so you can see the dials, you can see the bol bol uh, bombs and various other bits of equipment in there. Um, it is it is nice. Um, this is actually Wingnut Wings' least successful kit in terms of, of sales. And I actually bought this from a model shop after Wingnut Wings had stopped trading. Um, uh, it was the last Wingnut Wings kit they had and they'd been sat there for a little while. So I'm not quite sure why it's been not as popular as other kits. It only comes with one paint scheme. Um, and when I originally did a first impressions of this kit, I sort of said, oh, it's not very good. It only comes with one paint scheme, not realizing that there was only one ever built and therefore there is no other options. Um, and obviously, if you do get another Wingnut Wings kit, you get several options always. So, so maybe it's that. Maybe it's the size. Maybe it's the look. Maybe people don't like the look of it. But I think she's absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful. Uh, all of this... Um, all of the wood usually is sort of covered up on the inside, but here it's gloriously out there on display. Uh, and that's part of the thing that makes her a little bit intimidating. And maybe it's that. Maybe people aren't as confident uh, doing the wood, and so therefore all this exterior wood puts them off. I hope during the, period, the course of building this that I've shown you that uh, wood effects is not something to be scared of. You can achieve it really easily with products that are easily at hand and you don't have to spend um, a long time with oil paints and letting it all dry and, and all that sort of stuff. You can get through it really quickly using the oil brushes uh, and the sponge. It's a really, really quick process. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the build as much as I have. Um, and I'm sad that it's finished, but there you go. Now, I say this is finished. It's as finished as far as you guys are concerned. I've got one or two things left to do. So when we put the fuselage in, uh, and that was the most complex, tricky part of it, and, and all in all, installing the fuselage and doing the rigging took me five hours. Five hours. Um, it was difficult and technically complex and challenging because you've got struts that um, sit on top of each other where the joining blocks meet together and they have to be perfectly, perfectly aligned 
to be able to slot into the holes that they marry into. And if one of them is slightly off, it ain't going in. Um, so I had all of that. Plus, some of the fit is not as positive as you'd like it to be in the lower wings. And if you're not careful, the um, struts can sit too low. It's, you, it's possible to push them down further than they're intended, which means that the struts underneath won't go in properly. I had that problem also. Um, difficult to notice it when you're building struts and yet what they marry into isn't isn't there yet uh, very very difficult um, but the, the the one tip I would say to anyone who's got this and intends to build this um, is I did all of this rigging before I put the fuselage in and when you put the fuselage in it changed the geometric of the of the wings so the the wings get pushed out all of these are quite flimsy you can see I can I can push on that and change its shape um, and so the wings adjust everything into their final position which unfortunately means some of my rigging has slackened off which is a bit annoying but there you go the way to do this is to rig it all once you've got the fuselage in. And in fairness to the instructions, they don't show you the rigging diagram till after the fuselage is in. So uh, I thought it would be easier to do this without the fuselage in because you really can turn the wings upside down. So um, you need to find a way of having this with the fuselage in and upside down to do the rigging challenging you're going to have to build a jig there's no no way around it i'm lucky i have this this foam box uh, block but not everybody does um so i'm going to go away and re-rig certain areas of it so it's this sort of section here and some of the cables underneath against the floats but um this model has almost almost completely depleted my stock of um, um, turnbuckle uh, parts. And I always keep them in because I also use them on my ships. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I, I've got to order some more. So I can't do it now and then show you pictures of it all da -da, in its glory. Um, and I need to move on. So um, I will correct all of this at some point in the very near future. Um, I'm just looking at my Sean horse build and I've got a, order um, buckles for that um, and eyes for that so I'll, I'll do one uh, large order and then and then we'll come back to this so it, it will be completed so when you see the photographs in a moment um, just bear in mind that I am aware that some of the rigging is a bit slack and needs tightening up now just for completeness of the conversation on the rigging if I had used easy line um, the problem of the rigging slacking enough wouldn't have happened because easy line obviously adjusts itself to a point you know if you've not stretched it very much you can still make it slack but as long as you've put a bit of stretch into it when you've rigged it it will work and you can use easy line in the same way that I've used fishing line with the with the turnbuckles, you can thread it through, you can glue it together. What I'd say is it's a lot more time consuming. Um, terminating um, easy line is not easy. Um, it's a contradiction. And it is um, because you stretch it, you can get visually different thicknesses. And actually, it's not completely circular. Now, that's fine if you're doing a, a, a British uh, rigged aircraft because they tended to not be totally circular, the cables. But um, on this, I think they are. And um, uh, the, the fishing line gives you a, a more um, uniform finish. Also, um, Easy Line originally came out for railroad hobbyists for railroad layouts for things like uh, telephone cables going across telephone poles all the way around. Um, and most um, railroad layouts are in attics and garages and places where there's not a lot of nat natural light. Um, and this is gonna get displayed with um, a degree of natural light on it. And the problem is 
that UV light over time makes it brittle and all of my rigging would would come away whereas this is permanent the rigging is plastic effectively um, plastic uh, fishing line and so I won't have a problem with this degrading once I've tightened up those little bits so I think she's beautiful I think the detail is great um, I'm looking forward to binging, building another wingnut wings kit in the future um, and I'm looking forward to what else um, Kateri do um, because we know it's going to be of a, a similar standard um, the kit itself like I say the plastic parts are lovely lots of detail um, and goes together um, really well the instructions um, not as I'd hoped is what I'd say and again I can only talk about this kit because I've never built another wingnut wings kit I've got nothing to compare it with um, but I found the kit instructions um, frustrating there's a lot of cross-checking doubling back backwards and forwards backwards and forwards constantly um, and I found that annoying um, I want my instructions to flow and keep me on track and as a result of the layout of the instructions there are some decals I nearly missed and I actually was at the end with these de decals left over scratching my head going where do they go? And I, I went back through the instructions. I actually went on Scalemates, there's a set of these instructions. So I actually went back through the instructions three times on the Scalemates download where I could blow it all up to check what I'd missed. And I'd missed one on the propeller. So I thought there was two on the propeller, there's three. There's a little one that goes on the side there, which I did off camera. Um, I missed the little silver one that goes right at the front here. Um, so yeah backwards and forwards didn't like the flow of the instructions the the presentation of the instructions themselves really nice the the, the colorful um the nicely done and lots and lots of reference pictures which is handy but there were some decals i was left over with that weren't shown as blanked out on the um uh map at the start your sprue map there's a picture of the decals and a small number of them were greyed out, the ones that you weren't using, the bottom end of these uh, crosses, for example. Um, and I had three decals left over that weren't blanked out and that I couldn't find at all. Um, so that's, that's annoying because I know there's something on here that needs a decal and I don't know what it is or where it is. Um, so... I, yeah, and then yet you've got other decals that they show you where it is several times in different pictures on different pages, sometimes 10 pages apart. What's the point of that? Show me definitively where to put it and just once. So I don't want to rant about the instructions, but what I will say is um, the, the flow of the instructions caused me a problem. And... I was really disappointed with the fact that there was no instruction commentary on installing this uh, fuselage um, because it is quite complex. And although there's holes in the side and you can work out that the struts must go in the holes, there is nothing talking about um, how to build them up because there's stages to do it. Um, you do a lot of test fitting and you're doing a lot of test fitting with wings that are, that are fully built up and fragile and with um, a fuselage that's fully built up, fully painted, fully weathered. It has to be before you install it and yet there is nothing. It, you turn the page and it goes from you finish the wing assembly to now let's look at the floats and that's just miraculously arrived. So um, that was an issue for me. And finally, the rigging instructions are less than sufficient to clearly do the job. Um, you have uh, a picture of the back end looking up that captures some of the rigging at the top. And there is a picture at the front end um, looking sort of down, which which catches some of the rigging at the bottom. But there is rigging, particularly in this area between the engines, that it's not clear where it terminates. There is no pictures, there's no reference pictures, there's no commentary. 
uh, it's just left to your imagination. So I had to scratch around finding where our likely coupling points and I think I've worked it all out but I even had a couple of wires that I'd put on on the bottom um, where I could see there was uh, positions for for the eyes and I'd created rigging threads ready for it and then I couldn't find where it would terminate and so I ended up removing them um, so yeah those three things would need improving if wingnut wings were carrying on that would be my my, my my feedback so so it's not a perfect kit i can't say uh wingnut wings um go to uh uwd 10 out of 10 it's not because of the instructions but the build itself the plastic kit the overall finish is outstanding and it's my favorite model build of all time as a result um and i think she's absolutely stunning and yeah i'm sad to see the back of it right i'm going to take some photographs please bear in mind that i know the rigging is a bit slack and um, i will correct that so that i've got this to look back on in 20 years time and i can go ah i really enjoyed building that um so yeah so there you have it she is done and I will uh, take some photographs now and share those with you. And that was the go to build done. And if you enjoyed it um, and I've um, helped you in any way with uh, tips on how to do rigging and tips on how to do wood effects um, and you've learned something from that process, then you can say thank you in the super thanks um, and uh, below or you can catch me on my table talk where I'll give you some other options for supporting the channel. So thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed all of your comments during the build um, process. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You guys have clearly thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you very much. And that's it for now. So on to the next big thing. I will see you soon. You enjoy your modeling. Bye for now. Thank you.